Hey fellow designers, it's Karen of Made by Karen M. Today we are going to be shipping a custom prom dress. So I'm gonna show you guys my process of packaging, what I include in the box, and what method I use for shipping. So if you would like to learn this process, stay tuned, but before you do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend that may be interested in my content. Please turn on your notifications so that you get notified every time I upload one of these helpful videos by changing the notification bell from personalized to all. Join my Facebook group, Karen M Sewing Patterns. Follow me on Instagram at Karen M underscore Sewing Patterns. And check out my beginner friendly sewing patterns online at etsy.com slash shop slash made by Karen M. Let's get started. The items that you're going to need. Number one, a custom prom dress. You're also going to need a shipping box. I got mine from Target for about $4. I purchased one in white just because I felt like it looked a little bit classier. If you're gonna be shipping a lot of dresses, I recommend going to uline.com and ordering in bulk, but I only have a few this season so far, so I just went and bought them individually. Um, also, you're going to want a dress bag. I got my dress bags from Wawak. This is a non-woven white gown bag, 24 inches wide by 65 inches long. It'll fit most gowns. Also, I have some foil tissue paper that I'm going to be putting in my box. So give it a little razzle dazzle for when my client opens it. I have some shipping tape to tape my box shut. I also have a gift bag because for my out-of-town clients, I'm definitely including a goodie little bag um, just to give them a thank you for trusting me with this process. Um, they never have been able to meet me in person, weren't able to come in for a consultation. So I really appreciate the fact that they trusted me with such a big ticket item from so far away and doing the process completely virtually. These are the items that I'm including. I have a Vitamask lip mask from Target, one of my favorite self-care items. One of my favorite lip glosses, NYX Butter Gloss. And then I have some lashes and some lash glue. So that's what's gonna go in my goodie bag. And these are all the items that I am using to ship my package. I also forgot to include that you'll wanna have measuring tape as well, but if you made the dress, you're already gonna have this. So one thing that I do before I begin shipping my dress is I look at the client's contract and I check the measurements of the dress against the measurements that my client sent me. Now, this is something that I do continuously throughout the process of me making the garment to make sure it's the right size. But I also take photo evidence to show that the dress is the same size as the measurements the client sent, especially since it's a virtual process, it's an online purchase, you wanna make sure that you have insurance for yourself to be able to show that you made the product as requested. So my client's measurements for her bust, waist, and hips are 36, 34, and 44. So my mannequin is a little bit different in size from her. So 36, 34, and 44. So for the client, the mannequin's bust, we have 41 and a half inches. So I did not zip it all the way up in the back because I really don't want to stretch the mesh out. Now it can zip. That goes to show how stretchy the dress is, but um, I just didn't want to stretch the dress out. However, I do know that it is the correct size in the bust area because as I said, I checked this throughout the process. Waist for my client is 34 inches. My mannequin's waist is 33 and a half. And there is a little bit of extra room here. And then the hips for my client are 44 inches. And my mannequin's hips are 43 inches. And it does stretch as stated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff my mannequin a little bit in the waist and hip area, just so I can have that proof that it's the right size. I pretty much just take whatever scrap fabrics I have on hand and just stick them up into the dress. So I'm gonna stick some right here in the butt area and I'm gonna stick a little bit into the waist as well. So I just stuck a pin right there on one side of the hip and then I'm just wrapping it all the way around. Sorry guys, I'm trying to record with one hand. And then I'm gonna take a picture showing that it meets at 45. Same thing with the waistline. 
Got it at 34 inches. I'm gonna take a picture. And then for the bust, I don't have a dress zipped all the way. So I'm just gonna take a picture of the measuring tape going around to 38 inches. The next thing that you want to do before you package your dress is take good photos of it. This might be the only opportunity that you have to get photos of your work with this particular gown. So you want to make sure you take advantage. Your client might not send you any photos. Um, they are not obligated to unless you have it in your contract. And even if they do want to, the photos that they send might not be of good enough quality to post on your social media pages. For example, if they are, you know, going to prom and they're taking pictures outside, um, in the front yard with their family, they might have their like little sister's tricycle or something in the background. And then that would make the picture like not um, professional enough to use on your page. So this is your opportunity to get nice, good professional photos of your work. Um, and also sometimes clients who have not um, experienced like an event this big, they might just be so overwhelmed that they forget to take photos anyway. So don't let your opportunity pass you by. Make sure that you set up your dress in a nice uh, area and take good pictures of it before you put it in the box. You also wanna make sure that you get some video clips as well um, because on Instagram, for example, or even TikTok, engagement is higher when you have video clips and not just pictures people want to see people want to see the diamonds in motion they want to see the sparkles so make sure you take photos of the front and back of the dress as well as video yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. now that we've got all of our content it is time to package the dress. So I'm going to open my dress bag. The ones from Warwalk always have this little cardboard inside, so you want to make sure you remove that. And I'm just going to lay my dress bag down flat on the table. You can also do this while the dress is hanging up, maybe like in a doorway or something. Next thing you're going to do is place your dress in the bag. Make sure it's zipped up. You're gonna place your coat hanger through this hole that's in the top of the bag. I buy my coat hangers in bulk or maybe not bulk, but I buy them in a pack from like Marshalls, Ross. You can usually find um, a decent number for like $10, $20. So I always buy a big pack of like nice velvet ones with uh, silver or gold hardware. If you see any threads hanging off, this is your last opportunity to snip them. dresses in the box um, I'm gonna place my gift bag on top of it we got our lip mask lashes lash glue lip gloss 
And then I kind of actually like to leave it a little flat. Like so. And then I'll stick that on top of there. Now that everything is in the box, we got our dress, we got our gift bag. I'm just going to add in a couple pieces of this gold foil tissue paper. So it can be exciting when she opens it. it. So here's what our box looks like. And you can put whatever color you want. I usually like to put something with gold in it because those are my brand colors. If your color is purple, then get some purple tissue paper. Something else that I would suggest adding that I did not have on hand today is a thank you card. All ready to ship. For cheap items like sewing patterns that I don't mind replacing, I'll use USPS. But for a thousand dollar prom dress, I only trust FedEx. Do not ship a prom dress using the post office. They will deliver it late. They'll lose it. FedEx is the way to go. Okay, I'm back from FedEx office. The package has been shipped and I spent much less on two day shipping today than I spent on three day shipping last week. So um, the type of shipping is FedEx ground and it is two day shipping. So I shipped it today on Wednesday. The scheduled delivery date is going to be Friday. The only thing is that they cannot guarantee what time. So with the three day shipping, they guarantee it by 4.30 PM. And with the two day shipping, it can literally come at any time of day, I guess before close of their business day, which is probably like 8 PM or something like that. Um, the package is going to Alabama um, and my total cost including signature requirement and insurance of a thousand dollars worth was thirty one dollars and sixty three cents for my clients to receive her package in two days so i think that that was a pretty good deal um and i will be using that shipping method moving forward so when you do go to fedex uh make sure that you let them know you want um, two or three day shipping, whichever is the cheapest, which it seems like in most cases is gonna be the two day shipping. Tell them that you want to insure the package for the amount of your dress and you also want a signature requirement. Um, and you can request direct signature requirement, meaning that your client has to sign for it. And indirect signature requirement means that anyone over the age of 18 that is in that household can sign for the package. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and send this tracking number to my client so that she can keep an eye on its location. And then we wait. We wait and see what happens when she gets the dress. Um, and hopefully she loves it. I made this video flyer in Canva and texted it to my client on prom night asking her to please remember to tag me on social media and she didn't but that's okay I was still able to grab a couple of photos. She looks fabulous, the dress looks fabulous and I'm really proud of myself for having been able to execute this look completely virtually with no fittings. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.